Patricia Windrow at the Cable Easel, bringing you a program about painting and drawing. Tonight it's going to be chapter two of a thing called Fall Study, which I did before and never found the time to finish, so I'm going to finish it this evening and maybe add to the composition as a small piece of information about what do you do when you don't think that you've got it quite right, uh, or when you have room for something else of interest. And so let me continue with what, uh, where, we, where I left off the last time with this, um, with this apple in the foreground, and then carry on to a, let me turn my palette around the other way because the colors always have to be in the same rotation, uh, to, to show you how you continue with this, uh, this um, uh, apple is in the process of trying to become round. Working with spheres is what I was talking about when I chose this particular subject matter in order to be able to find out just how you handle the problem of a sphere. It is all of course done with light and shade. Um, here is the highlight, which obviously is at this point much too harsh. It is softer than that on the real one. So because working in oils means that you are working on a wet surface, blending is, is possible and it also is what makes oil painting of such a special nature. Uh, the, uh, the exactness with which one can achieve a blend can take place only with oils. Acrylics dry too quickly and watercolors um, are never as distinct. Um, they can be distinct, but most of, most of the time the reliance of water running into, into you know, areas is what makes watercolor what it is. So oils are what um, enable the painter to get the realistic life like blends, which are part of the, of the business of making forms believable, such as spheres, circles and spheres. When you deal with uh, objects working from life, you will find that uh, it is not just, it is not intimidating, it is far more interesting because all the information that you'll ever need is right there, such as the details on the surface of this apple. They are very small, they're very subtle, but they are, the, they are the characteristic of this particular piece. And when you put in these, these uh, blemishes or these patterns, those are what distinguish it from just a, um, a haphazard, um, maybe relying upon accidents. This is purposeful and it is planned and it is extremely important for people who are interested in doing life studies. Uh, there is a shadow being cast by that little stem and it conforms to the shape of the apple. It goes down into the cavity and it comes back and it finds the circle of the of the, of the mm, part of the apple that turns in here. Then of course comes the, the stem, which has to be paid attention to. It's a little bit darker than the shadow and it comes directly in the center here. You don't really have to pay too much attention to the, sh to the shading on this because there is none at this point. I do not see much shading, but there is a little tiny part at the top that is paler than the rest of it and it tells you that, it's, that it is also a sphere in its own way. It is a kind of a sphere itself because it's, um, because it's a cylinder, which is all part of the circle. So, now, in order for, this, for these objects to not be floating around in space, they must be anchored. And the things that anchored them, anchors them, are the shadows that they cast. I'm going to pick only one shadow. We are in a studio with many, many lightings. And so, there are too many shadows. Uh, this is the, you would never find this in your own environment. So, I'm just going to pick the middle shadow, which is more than likely the same kind that you would have in your own environment. You wouldn't have triple television lights working at your own, uh, at, in, in your own space. And so when you do a shadow, uh, be sure that it is darker towards the subject matter than it is towards the, uh, towards the edge of it. And many times, if the light is diffused, it is not going to have a harsh edge to it. Here, it, um, there, I've, I've lifted this forward. Here, the edge is a little bit diffused, but not, not that much. Now, underneath here, we have another shadow. This is going to anchor the pumpkin. In, uh, it's, uh, instead of it's just being, uh, for instance, a decal that has no shadow, it is going to anchor it. And the, uh, the shape of this uh, middle shadow here is a little bit bumpy, obviously. Some of those, um, some of those ribs are, being, are determining the shape of that shadow. 
I, uh, I'm going to use of some mauve and a little bit of uh, green for this shadow and make it sort of an indistinct uh, uh, darkish color, but with no particular, no particular shade. It is all part of the, um, of the general uh, nothingness of the color of a shadow. Uh, also, when you find that a shadow, uh, um, when, when the object has got some reflected light, such as it has here, and I'll show you in just one moment with a nice, with a nice tight shot, I'll show you how the side of this pumpkin can in fact have a light area against the uh, shadow place because it is, it is picking up a reflection from the table on which it stands. So that I'm going to show you that way. This shadow, this uh, highlight is very important to show you that you don't have to, um, that it does not have to blend because it does have an ability to pick up a, um, a reflection from the table. It's, uh, it's fascinating to do this kind of thing and to really work at it. Well, now I have the corn. Ah, the corn. The problem with the corn is that there's so many uh, kernels on it. Also, they have shape and they have different colors. So what you try to do is to interpret as best you can. Now, the corn is going to be sh in shadow down here as if it did not have a bunch of kernels on it. You're going to have to uh, shade the whole thing because it is, after all, a cylinder which is also a circle. If you were to pick up that corn and look at, the, at its end, you would find that it is in fact a circle. It's not a sphere, it's a cylinder. Dealing with circles all the time. Well, the interpretive business of working with these, of the, with these uh, kernels means that you um, can, can improvise. You, it, this is not a seed catalog and you're not interested in seeing that every single kernel is going to be uh, shown. It has to, however, tell you what is happening here. So there is a need to separate the, um, the rows and because the kernels on this particular corn are, uh, are uneven and some, are, some stick up higher than others, therefore these lines are going to be um, presumably a little bit sh a little bit more wavy. Um, this is what, what you would call a somewhat impressionistic version of this ear of corn and it, it, if you were to do every single kernel I think that would, you would probably lose the flavor of the of, of a painterly quality. You want to have it look as if it has been painted and not photographed. So uh, this may sound as though, as though I'm trying to get away with something, but this is the way I would handle it. And many times, uh, this is a, I've done this in my own fine arts and my own paintings by giving interpretations of this. I'm having to lean my hand on, on, this, um, on the easel here to steady it so that I can, in fact, uh, get some of these curved. Now we've got the curves. We're fooling with the curves again. And these are each one of these little... Uh, um, uh, oh gosh, what do they call? Yeah, seeds, kernels rather. They conform to a circle because they are in a row, but they are rounded at the top. So all of these things is, is once again the, the the repetition of the lesson of working with circles. As you can see, I'm using my small finger as a steadying uh, as a steadying mechanism so that I can get close. People say you have a wonderful steady hand. Well, I mean, I have a steady hand, but you have to still uh, be able to steady the, um, the brush when you're working with details as small as this. The color of the va variation in color of these kernels will come later after I have given a, the general impression that this is an ear of corn with all these separate uh, things. I, w I, I thought a little bit uh, carefully before I chose this saying, this is going to take too long on the program, but I think that it's worth investigating how you would handle something as complicated as this without being intimidated by it. Well, some of those kernels are sort of a mauve, a kind of a little indistinct mauve, but they are, they do have color. So I'm going to put a few in. I'm not going to count how many there are. I'm not going to say, well, there are four of them here and there are 11 of them over here. I'm going to give you just a general feeling of what they're like. Uh, that uh, they should be a little bit darker. Some of them are even blue. So some of them are, uh, you um, you would find yourself 
only interested in giving a kind of an impression of these. As I said before, we're not interested in doing a seed catalog, and this is where there is, um, there is the need to be able to distinguish between how do you, how do you remain realistic and how can you be, remain interesting and not have it, you know, boring and repetitious. Uh, if I were to do a study of these, of these kernels, then I, would, then I would concentrate and say, okay, I'm going to do every single one of them exactly as they are, but I'm not sure that, I, I'm not sure that it's worth that effort. What I were interested in is the painterly quality of these things. So there is also some there with bright yellow. I'm going to rinse my brush, of course, and get some bright yellow in there, which, uh, which is also another part, another nice um, feature on working from life, that you get, uh, you get these color variations and you have the ability to be able to distinguish uh, where they are and why they're doing that. And it is really interesting and really fascinating to do these things. And here, here we got a little bit of highlights and with good light, nice tight shot in here. We'll show you how these little kernels are going to look as though they are in fact uh, uh, changing color as they go along. There, there's a couple of white ones here, a little bit, a couple of yellow ones there, and so forth. Uh, the end of it has gone, turned, so sort of turned tan, like the middle of the pumpkin has gotten kind of a little bit dead, and so it doesn't have any, any, any thing going on onto it. But here I, we need to put the shadow, and my shadow is going to be once again the same color combination that I had before, a little bit of the sap green and some of the, um, some of the uh, bright purple, the dark purple that I have called dioxazine purple. Uh, it's a chemical color, um, but I do believe that the Grumbacher people have figured out some way to make it last. Uh, a lot of these colors that are glamorous and made of chemicals sometimes don't last over the years, but I do believe they've got about 50 years of, of experimentation with these, and so anything that hasn't played bad tricks on you in 50 years looks like it's pretty stable. Um, many times when you, uh, when you see paintings that uh, don't look like you remember them, it's because the, paintings have deter the paint has deteriorated. So we have the kernel of the corn uh, resting on the, um, on the table here and anchored by this shadow. Uh, I'm going to uh, continue with the uh, interpretation of that rather complex but highly intriguing bunch of straw uh, that sticks out of this uh, of this corn and it sort of plays around back here and there's a little bit of in there and then it becomes very brilliant and it seems to be behind here so I'm gonna I'm going to uh, run behind here and then I may shock you by running right over what I painted before and then come back to that and put that back in. See, I can in fact, well, well I, won't, I won't do that. that. That's a little bit of a shock. But I would do that if I were working in my studio. I would go directly over this piece and I wouldn't worry about it because I know how to get it back there because I have my subject matter in front of me. Working from life, once again, I'm telling you, it is far more interesting and also far easier. Hard probably for people to believe, but it is easier easier to work from life because there is no question. You, you, you don't have to wonder, how does that go? It is there right in front of you and able for you to be able to, to see it at your leisure and to study it. So we have here a rather rather interesting way of that this that this straw is, um, and I'm using some black, I'm using some ivory black and white and some tans to give you the feeling of, of how this has faded and it's gotten, it's gone and gotten itself uh, all dried out and the color has left it. There is also uh, a wonderful looking, uh, uh, crisp looking kind of piece that is running back here. It's part of the, uh, of the ear uh, straw of the corn that has, is giving us the uh, flavor of, w w of what these things are that are not dead, but they are in fact definitely faded. Not easy to do, no question about it. I would not dream for a moment to tell you that this is easy to do. It means a tremendous amount of observation, also a lot of uh, sorting out of what you're seeing. Well, while I'm, while I'm, while I'm uh, going to uh, be working on this, I'm gonna take a break for just a short moment. Don't go away, come back and we'll see the end of this. Bye-bye.
am back again to finish this episode of number two of a fall study. Um, I find that I need something on the side and I'm going to show you how I would uh, solve this problem. I have a knife and I have an apple and I'm going to attempt something rather a little bit difficult but I think that it ought to probably give you some idea of how you can compose as you go along. I'm peeling this because I do feel that I want to have uh, another kind of a whimsical um, prop here and I'm going to stop peeling it right there and see whether or not I'm going to get what I want. Um, I'm going to go, lean over here and I'm going to place this on my, on my composition and see whether or not it does what I want it to do. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, uh, maybe we can get a nice, uh, a nice look at that. And that to me would probably give some interest. Of course, this would have to be done at the last minute. You can't possibly do this when you're um, uh, expecting to not be able to finish it at that particular uh, time because that, uh, that is going to turn, um, it's going to turn yellow and then brown and eventually it's simply not going to be right anymore. However, I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to show you that it is once again, it's a circle. Uh, but it's been cut, and I have I have the um, I have the peel, which has made it co a little bit complicated. So this is a question of knowing how to draw, and if you look at it carefully enough, you'll be able to figure out exactly what what is it that it makes it do what it does. It turns the corner, it has a cut here, and then it continues, and then it turns another corner here. Here it comes down this way and then it goes in around and I'm going to get some more turpentine and I wanted you to see how these compositions are uh, uh, grow. Um, p composing a painting is many times just as complex, sometimes even more complex than painting it. N knowing what to put and where. And then when you finally get the idea, knowing how to do it. So I wanted you to see how when, when the opportunity presents itself that you, that you can in fact change an original composition by adding something to it. Here is where this apple uh, changes here. This is complicated and I once again probably oh, should have thought more carefully about how to get this because these things are optical illusions in, in, in a strange kind of way because all of a sudden this apple has now gotten some angles to it that it didn't have before. However, here is that little stem is still in there and it comes down and around here. So these strange cuts are what is interesting to me. And this one, come, well, all right. So let me see if I can get this, um, get this uh, squared away before, uh, uh, and there's a touch of green in it. Uh, so some reason maybe the apple is a little bit un, uh, unripe. But the touch of green is here, maybe a little bit more than that. And um, you have to be able to tell where it is that it has um, that it has changed with a shadow. So here we have a little bit of a shadow there, and it's turning turning a little bit dark. But it is all still part of the white apple. As you can see, I find myself always giving myself more problems than I suppose I ought to. However, it's no fun if there's not a problem involved. And when the problem is involved, and then you can solve it, that's when you that's when you find yourself really intrigued with the business of, of painting. Uh, at least that's the way it is with me. When, when, when I have a call-in show, I hope that I can t talk to some people about these problems and see whether or not anybody can tell me what their problems are. And then, uh, so I'm trying to solve problems of, that maybe you've never had, <laughs> which is a, maybe a sort of a silly pastime. Anyway, here is the bottom of this apple. Here's a little bit of there's a tinge of red and it's sort of turned brown and then the peel comes. So we need to uh, we need to worry about the peel. Well, right, let me just get this one side here. This is quite brilliant because it's facing the light. There we are. Good. Um, I'm going to show I'm going to show you how the peel can get done. It's all the same part of the problem. Just look and see what you're doing, observe and then and then paint. So here is the side. It's kind of brownish. It has not got that much color. I didn't see any brilliant apples today, but I did see these lovely things. And here is the part of the top of that peel that has that has not that is still attached to the peel. So ah, okay, that needs to be a little bit thinner. There we are. And here is the inside of the peel, which is somewhat darker, a little bit green, and 
it's actually in some so, sort of deeper shadow than that. And there it is. Here's some deeper shadow. As you can see, I am just as much uh, uh, confounded and surprised at the things that I see as anybody else would be. But uh, the reason that I'm intrigued with these things is because they do present problems. And the problem about this wonderful thing is that it has a very complicated shadow that I'm going to draw in right now and let, let you see because time will be wearing out soon. This shadow comes like so. Uh, and if you were here, you'd be able to see exactly what I see. It comes like so it gets very thin here, it turns, it, there's a corner, and then it swings out like, like from the apple there, and it comes down and does this. So here is the general shadow of that particular peel, which to me is probably one of the more interesting parts of this composition, to have the shadow of the peel doing that, and to have the apple semi-peeled. I have done this a number of times, and uh, anybody who's interested in knowing whether or not these things sell, the answer is when, they, when I do this kind of thing, they, the paintings sell much quicker than the ordinary ones that don't have what you might call these uh, strange, interesting kind of twists and turns. Now, now there it is. All right, let me get on to the um, let me get on to the rest of this peel, and then we'll talk about background uh, before the program is over, because the background um, at this point is uh, not of that much importance. It, it it is important, but it should not uh, dominate the the business of finishing this picture. It can be the the. Um, the uh, background is, uh, is an arbitrary thing at this point because this, the props are so interesting that we don't really have to worry too much about what to do about the, um, about the background. The background should probably take care of itself, and the simpler, the better. When, it, uh, when you get to complicated backgrounds, you find yourself in a tremendous amount of trouble, and it's not necessary. So I've got this peel coming around the corner here. There are some, there are some blemishes in it uh, that, were, that were on the side of the apple, and uh, I would never in the world be able to guess that those things are there unless they were looking at me right now. Um, the, uh, the business of picking these props uh, is an important part of how you compose a picture. Um, I do not rely upon uh, glamorous and um, difficult to handle things. They are there in the markets. They are also on my shelves. And if friends of mine have got a... Uh, a prop that I would that I find interesting, I will many times borrow it, and people I find are very cooperative. They don't mind lending you their vases and or or plates or any item that you find was w would be interesting for a composition. And most people have got a lot of very intriguing things. I sometimes borrow things from my family, and sometimes I borrow things from my friends. But for the most time, uh, I like to pick things up in um, in thrift shops and. Um, and try to uh, accumulate interesting v uh, props and vases and things to, to go into my still life compositions. And believe me, uh, relying upon your own taste is the thing that is going to make it original when you finally get to doing your compositions. I have a short amount of time left. I want to talk about the, um, the uh, uh, business of having uh, a signature. Signatures are important. Uh, a lot of times I find that people don't quite understand how to do signatures. Let me just get that stem in my apple and see whether or not the apple is, is, being, is working. Um, I'm hoping that it's uh, working. There's a sort of a blemish in there that I may or may not put in. I think I will put it in as long as that blemish is there. I keep talking about realism, so I may as well put the realism in. It's a, it's a blemish right here, and it's kind of a hole that has taken place, and it needs to be attended to with a little bit of um, those funny things that happen when the inside of an apple's got a spot, it turns sort of orange. Anyway, let me talk about uh, signature. And a signature on a painting is more than likely, as you have more than, oh, 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 there's a shadow running along the ground here. Oh, oh, very interesting. Let's see if we can catch that before too long. The shadow of this, uh, of this um, piece coming out from the pumpkin is coming here. It's going running along here, and it meets that, and then guess what? It runs along the side of the apple. It is casting a shadow on the side of the apple. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Now, some people may find that I'm going on a little bit too much about these things, but to me, that's intriguing. Okay, I also have, um, I also have a, oh, a, a rather interesting thing come, taking place over here by the corn. There's a piece of, of um, 
corn silk or, or stuff coming out of it and it's coming towards me in the picture and going off that away, which means another thing to lead your eye into the picture. It's kind of, it's a little bit funny on the end. It sort of turns and twists here and it casts its own shadow also. It has a shadow right here. This thing is its, is its shadow. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Comes down here and it comes and fools around here and there it is. So the shadow of that thing is also interesting. Well, I'm going to, before the time runs out really too quickly, I'm going to sign this and I will show you that I think that the signature is an important part of the painting. Do not print your signature if you can possibly help it. Write it. Uh, get your brush <coughs> with some turpentine and color and sign it at the lower right part of the picture. <coughs> This way, I seem to be in trouble. <laughs> and I always put the year in. The year is important. Well, before too much time goes out, and now that I can speak to you again, haven't totally choked to death. <laughs> I thank you for watching this program. I hope that you got something out of it. I uh, try to make things as clear as possible. I do have a live program uh, the last Tuesday of every month at 8 o'clock in the evening. And so tune in, ask me questions at that time about whatever it is that you have on your mind and possibly about what I'm doing. This program is devoted to working from life. And so my advice is if you're interested in painting, work from life. In the meantime, thanks for watching. This is Pat Windrow at the Cable Easel on Channel 6 for Cable Vision. Good night. <laughs>